Motorhead Garage is revved up and ready to go. This week, we show you how to protect your truck with a bed liner that looks great and goes on easily. We've got a simple way to eliminate flat spots when you store your car. And when it comes to fighting both rust and wear on your precious automobile, we've got the solutions. All that, plus a couple of field trips to see some amazing builds, next on Motorhead Garage. Welcome to Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. You know, we're taking a look at this bed liner that we just sprayed on. It's still wet, it looks great, and it was super simple to get this kind of result. And that's thanks to our friends at Rugged Restore. Now, this is their barricade spray on bed liner. And Michelle, how does it work differently from other bed liners that are out there? So this is a fantastic DIY at home spray on bed liner because it doesn't require any solvents, any activators. And the best part is it's water soluble. So you can just take it out to the garden hose and rinse it off when you're done. We're going to see it in action coming up. But in the meantime, I want to hear more about your story because I find it fascinating. How did you come across this product? Well, we've been in the detailing industry for a while. And as a hobby, my husband also builds hot rods. So I wanted to start joining him out in the shop and learning how to build myself. But I'm kind of more of a Jeep girl. Wanted to learn how to build a Jeep and wanted to start entering all female off-road rallies. So you just jumped in the deep end, right? I away. did. I just jumped in That's and cool. we worked together. We built my Jeep. And in the process of building it, we also tested this bed liner product for it and we absolutely loved it we knew we had to get this on the market so everyone could experience it so we worked for several years with the manufacturer and we are now at a point that we are able to offer it to the general market what did you love about it so much when it was on your Jeep well first of all it was so easy to apply we didn't have to do anything professional we could just do it ourselves and it was really good I mean we actually had an incident where the Jeep caught on fire and where that area was just outside of the flames like it was it was fine it held up through the fire I mean we did have to do some touch-up where the actual flames were but it was incredible and we were like we have to get this out to the public well you guys really have taken the market by storm and I think Kevin that's probably because of how easy it is to apply now what are the steps that we need to go through to put this on so just like with any other coating paint or anything else the prep is the most important thing that you have to do which luckily you guys have done all the hard work for me you're welcome <laughs> thank you very much that's the hardest part so we want to scuff up the surface, whether it's the metal in a bed or it can be applied to wood and it can be applied to plastic, whatever, just as long as we have a mechanical bond. In this case, I would usually use a DA sander like you guys did. Just get everything scuffed up and prepared. What if I don't have a dual action sander? What do you recommend? Uh, you can use hand sanding, you can use block sanding, whatever you want. And also this product in particular is a brushable or rollable. So if you don't even have an air compressor, you can actually use that. Instead. But you still have to do the same still prep have to work. do the same prep work. Gotcha. In our case, we used 150 grit sandpaper. Right, that's nice. perfect. That's absolutely perfect. And then after you're done sanding, you gotta do a little bit of cleanup. What do you do there? Yeah, we wanna degrease it with some sort of all-purpose cleaner. We offer one, but you can also use a simple green or something like that. Any all-purpose degreaser, all-purpose cleaner. Uh, and we wanna degrease the surface to make sure it has that uh, something good to stick to. And we did the degreasing as well. Then you and Michelle sprang into action. And what was the first thing you two did? Yeah, we just did a quick wipe down to make sure all the dust was off, do one final wipe down. And then the first thing you do is it's a little bit like a dry drywall gun where you want to adjust the pattern that you want. It can be super thick, it can be very thin. So we just adjusted the pattern, got that locked in. Then the nice thing with this is the gun just goes right in the bottle, screw on the bottle and you're ready to spray. It reminded me of like a weed sprayer you'd use That's in the right. yard. It yeah, couldn't be easier. Like right. So once we get the pattern adjusted, then we're ready to go. So we just start spraying. You want to do all the vertical surfaces first. So in a truck bed, I did all the upper surfaces first, the vertical surfaces, and then we move on to the horizontal surfaces. And I noticed you know, when we were getting things ready, we kind of dropped a little bit on the floor and the cleanup was amazingly simple. Right. One of the great things about this product is it's 100% water soluble. Once it cures, obviously it's hard like plastic, but as long as it's wet, it's easy to clean up. You can use your garden hose, you can use any cleaner if it gets on the floor or surfaces. But once the actual spraying happens, it's only about 10 minutes, which was great. How many coats do you recommend putting on? Typically, we can do most things in one coat. If you adjust your air quality properly, you get the pattern done properly, then you can do one coat. You can add a second coat, even a third coat. It tends to be a little bit bit more of a, a sheen on it than the matte finish, but you can do as many coats as you want. One is sufficient for most surfaces. I'm talking most surfaces, metal, can we use it on plastics? What kind of materials will they hear? Pretty much anything you can scuff up. You know, obviously if it's a flexible material, you don't want to put it on a balloon. No, plastic, wood, you can use it. A lot of people will use them for their home built trailers. Uh, you can use it in beds, obviously. Metal is, is the best. It's used a lot for corrosion resistance, both in the commercial standpoint and the industrial standpoint. It was actually used 
first on the A1 Hummer, the original Hummer design. Oh, wow. They used it on the interiors of those vehicles. And a lot of companies, it's great for rust prevention. So once it's coated, so you can use it for frames, suspension components, and even your truck bed and, and that kind of normal things. But you can use it basically any surface that you can scuff up and have it stick to, it's good to go. And if you're doing a coat and you get stopped in the middle of it, can I come back to it or do you recommend finishing one coat? We would typically recommend you finish the whole thing unless you're doing two coats. If you're just doing a single coat, you want to try to do it all at one time. You would want to try to minimize the overlap of a single coat because it tends to kind of sheen up on itself. But most cases, you're going to be able to come back and finish it later. But, you know, just like with painting, if you're going to do a whole panel at a time, if you're going to paint something, you'd want to kind of do the same process. Now, I notice you and Michelle are wearing red, white, and blue today. So that indicates to me that this product must be made where? Right here in the United States. As a small U.S. company, we want to try to bring as many American-made products as we can to the market, and Barricade's one of those great products. The procedure was completely flawless for us, but what if I have an issue or I don't like the way this has gone on for some reason? Oh, we do a money-back guarantee. Uh, uh, typically, if you do the prep right, you get it degreased, you're not going to have any problems. That's why we're not afraid to do that. Uh, but it usually goes on very easily. And the nice thing about the product also is if you have a problem later on, a little part of the surface comes up, you really can just touch it up right away. You can use a brush or a, a roller or something like that, do a really quick touch up, and it's, it's good to go. Well, it's a great product. And you guys have a whole bunch of other great stuff, too. You can check it out at ruggedrestore.com slash motorheadgarage to see their entire line and what it can do for you. We will be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat right after this. Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat is brought to you by Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. AP Laser, leading the way. And by Top Coat, advanced coating solutions through innovation and technology. This is Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. We thank you for hanging out. And to me, there's nothing better than hanging out with our old buddy, John Gardner. Perfect. So you finally got the boss to use the tire cradles. Yeah, you know the boss. When he parks this Corvette, it could sit for days, weeks, months. That's not the problem. The problem is when he goes to drive it, all of a sudden he asked me to balance all the tires. It's not the balance issue, it's actually flat spots in the tire. No more, not with these tire cradles. And I wish I had these like 25 years ago when I was in college. I was a freshman, we had to park our cars way out by the stadium, so you know I was never gonna go get it, lazy college kid, right? So I'd drive it once a week, twice a week, once a month, whenever I could get to it. And when I'd get out there, especially if it was cold up there in the north, start driving it, start chattering. And the wheel was, I, I had no idea what was going on the first time it happened. Then I realized the tire would start to warm up. It would round out, those flat spots would go away. And uh, I was really lucky. Uh, I was lucky that it wasn't a permanent thing. It was just temporary for me. Yeah, and temporary is the key there. It could be temporary, it could be permanent. Now, if it's permanent, that's a problem. These tires get super expensive. Not the problem with tire cradle, man. I'll tell you why. It's all in the construction. This is pretty cool because it's a polyurethane polymer. And what that does, it actually cradles the tire, just like it says. When you run this over, you can see on our Corvette, it forms to the tire. Now, that's doing two things. It's stopping the flat spots from happening because of that nice polymer in there. But it's also kind of cradling the tire, which helps with the temperature variant of the tire and it stops that problem. Now, you know, you've seen the other ones. We've tried plastic, we've tried wood, we've tried carpet pads, we've tried about everything. Doesn't work, you still have the flat spots. So this is the way to go and I like it too. You saw when I pull up on there, usually if you start to go, especially with a rear wheel drive car, bam, you're gonna kick everything out of there. Really a mess. This one, not the case. You see the bottom here, it's all textured finish. So when you drive up on there, it's gonna stay in place. These things really do the job, Dave. And the ones in the front have that bump there so it'll, you can know where to stop. Absolutely. And it's not just for situations like mine. This is if you have a fun car like this, chances are it's sporty. It's probably not your daily driver. So you're going to take it out on the weekend, maybe on Sunday to go get ice cream or something like that. Or if you live up north, you're only going to be able to drive it in the summertime. So it's going to sit all winter long. And that means flat spots, especially for a performance car. Yeah, and our Corvette, maybe not so much, but the newer cars, think about that. The rims are what, 18, 19, 20, 24 inch rims? Well, what that does, you got a 24 inch rim, you're getting a smaller and smaller and smaller sidewall on the tire, and the tires are getting wider. This thing's 15 inches wide, which equivalents to about a 345 millimeter tire. It can handle a pretty big tire. 
with these new tires, they do have those smaller sidewalls, like you said, so they deflect less. So that deformation is actually transferred to the tread of the tire instead of the sidewall that would usually pick up that deflection. And of course, these tires being wider as they are, they pick up the temperature from the road or from the parking lot, so that'll make them go flat easier. And being sportier cars, we know there's a softer compound involved that makes them grippier and a lot more fun, but a lot more susceptible to flat spots too. Yeah, no doubt about it. You don't have to take our word for it. These things are all independently tested, so flat spots with other things, when they put it on the tire cradle, never happened. You don't have that problem, number one. You got a lifetime warranty. Look at it. There's nothing to go wrong. It's all in the material, my friend. That's what I said. They're going to last forever. They're lightweight. They're easy to store, take with you. Motorhome, whatever it may be, they hold a ton of weight on there. And most importantly, things we like the most, right? Made in the USA, man. Got to love that. You got it, and they'll hook you up if you're an American hero as well. If you are a veteran or if you're active duty military you get a discount car clubs too also get a discount john your yugo club you can hook everybody up they'll give you a group discount just uh, look them up and they will hook you up well that's good that they're low profile because in my yugo club we're doing a lot of pushing on the cars and they do a lot of sitting and it's nice because guess what you get all four in one pack you get two front with the bump stops here you get two of the rears right there saw how easy it was kick them under there bam drive up on it no problem whatsoever get you set you're never going to have that problem you won't have to worry about your fillings falling out any, Dave. Check them out on the web at TireCradle.com. We've still got our foot on the gas, so stay buckled in for more Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat. Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. This is Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat. You know, every once in a while, our Motorhead crew gets to hit the road, and a few weeks back, we checked out the Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Here's a great look in 1979 Golden Eagle Limited Edition. There weren't very many of these made, and it's very cool to be standing next to one. Now, Kenny, this is a project, a labor of love between you and your son. Yeah. How long have you been working on it? Five years. What did it look like when you got it? Oh, it was a basket case. We got it out of the woods, so it was pretty demolished. Now, what did you think when you first saw the condition it was in? I was surprised. I bought it sight unseen, really. So it was a surprise to us, but with, with my son, we was able to pull through it. Now, tell me what you've done to it. Uh, we totally redid the, the tub. The par tub part of it, was the floors and all, was totally gone away. We uh, redid the front end, everything. Just, we rebuilt all the suspension, all that's new. We rebuilt the rear end, front end. Um, we rebuilt all the running gear, engine, transmission, transfer case, everything. This is a completely new Jeep. It was acid dip and put on on saw benches and come from there. So everything, there's not a bolt in this Jeep that hasn't been touched. But there are a couple things that are original to it, but only a couple. What's, right. what's original? Uh, what's original to it, it is a Golden Eagle original, and it come with a, with a V8. It had a 304, now it's got a 306. So as uh, far as the original, this is the original tub, original hood, grill, and the, tr the transmission, transfer case, rear end, front end, all that's the original equipment that would come on. What's it like to work on a project like this with your son? Oh, it's on, I can't tell you. It's great. Few things bring fathers and sons together like the magic of the automobile. Magic was also in the air at the NSRA Nationals in Louisville, Kentucky, and we were lucky enough to get inside. This might be my favorite car right off the bat. It's a 1953 Henry J. Cecil Taylor is the one that built this car. How did you find it? Well, we, my wife and I were at the LA Roadster Show two years ago, and we were walking down through the flea market. It was set all in primer, sitting on a trailer, no motor, no tranny. And she says, I like that little car walked for a while, she says, if I had that little car, I'd drive it every day. The body was in really good shape, so we didn't have to do a whole lot of body work, but uh, doing the mechanical and getting the interior done and actually doing the body work, it took a few months, not a long, long time. What grabs you about the Henry J? Uh, it's just a stylish little car. I mean, the Henry J just has some really nice body lines, and then you don't see them every day, so it, it made it more interesting for me and my wife. What are some of the things that the two of you added to give this thing a little more style? The previous owner had French the headlights and did away with the door handles, and it all really made it look kind of attractive, so I just left it the way it was. It's British racing green, 
My wife picked that color. She picked the interior color. We put a, a brand new crate motor, the 350 cubic inch small block, 700R transmission, TCI independent front suspension, and a nine inch Ford rear. And uh, it's got air conditioning, cruise control, power steering, power brakes, power windows, CD player, so we can play the Eagles when we driving down the road. All just good, comfortable stuff. So she can make this a daily driver, right? That's exactly why she wanted. She says, we got some nice cars at home already, but you can't, the ones we have, you can't drive in the rain, you can't leave it a mall. She said, if I had that, I could drive it every day. I said, that's fine. I've seen Henry J's before, but I honestly don't know that much about him, and I bet you some of the folks at home don't know either. What's the story behind this car? They were built by the Kaiser Company. I'm sure everybody recognizes that name, Henry J. Kaiser. Uh, this particular one is uh, called a Corsair Deluxe, and there's a couple things that made it a Deluxe. Was uh, has a glove box door, and it has a dome light, and that made it a Deluxe, is what I understand. And uh, they actually had Henry J's that you could buy at Sears and Roebuck store, and they changed the badges, the the emblems on them, and they read all states. So you could actually buy this car. I think it was probably six or seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars it wasn't much at the time it was relevant and if you want to shell out about eight more dollars you got the deluxe there you go do not go anywhere don't touch that dial don't touch that mobile device or that ipad or whatever you're watching the show on motorhead garage presented by top coat returns right after this motorhead garage presented by top coat is brought to you by stage eight fasteners home of the world's best locking header bolt locking kits now available for all turbo applications go to stage 8.com mobile environmental solutions the leading portable mobile paint booth dino blade for better fuel economy increased power and a cleaner engine and by tribotex make your engine last longer came all the way to New Hampshire to hang out here in the living room with Joe and a couple of our closest friends and well, okay, actually it's not the living room. Believe it or not, this is the waiting area here at the headquarters of New Hampshire Oil. This is where folks get to hang out while their car is being worked on. And Joe, this is an amazing customer experience. What can folks expect when they roll in here? Well, one, we try to make this feel like it is a living room, uh, not a garage. We want them to be comfortable. And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to involve them in the process to the extent that we can. One of the things we're doing now is we're putting cameras in the garage so that they can view the monitor from here and see their vehicles being undercoated. When we started, we had a window from our waiting room into the garage and every one of our shops. Not possible with this shop because the building's out back, but they're always involved. We'll pull the vehicle in, we'll let them inspect it before they leave, if that's what they want, every year. How important is it for you to give them that kind of experience when they come in? It's what I would want. And, and did you look at other places, other service places, to see what they were doing and to see what you liked and what you didn't like and wanted to adapt it? No, I just get gauged on what I thought w was appropriate and what I would, I treat everyone the way we would like to be treated. And it's, we're a family run business. So it's from uh, his, John's experience on the phone with my son, Anthony to Carol, right down to the technician who looked under his vehicle this morning and discussed the, uh, you know, options. And how important is it for you to have this experience then translate to your dealers around the country? We, we emphasize this experience and the professionalism and the application being done properly because honestly a good product is completely worthless unless it's applied properly. Most of our dealers come in here and train, they're invested. We're also now having dealers ask us how can we take this to the next level and franchising may just be the next uh, step for us. Of course, if you're around Chichester or Manchester, New Hampshire, you can bring your vehicle right here, but you can also check on the web to see if there's a dealer or a franchise near you. NHOILundercoating.com. Every time I hear about an additive, I want to know if it's going to work, but more important perhaps, I want to know if it's going to be safe in my vehicle. Tribotex Pasha, you say is safe, how do I know? By now we have over 40,000 cars on the road, more than 10 years of research, backing from major funding agencies. We was recently featured in NASA spin-off magazine as well as in tech briefs. We got Defense Innovation Award, National Innovation Award, and accolades from major research uh, institutions. So there's real science behind this. I mean, you're a scientist yourself. One of the things, though, that I hear from people is, will this clog my oil filter anytime you hear of a new oil additive? 
typical nanoparticle is 20 times smaller than pores in high performance oil filters. So they're not going to stack in the oil filter. Where do those nanoparticles specifically go to coat the engine and protect it? Nanoparticles attach only where friction takes place. So when there is a friction, pressure, vibration, and noise, they go to work and protect the surface. I think this is remarkable because you first used these in human bodies, the nanoparticles, when you were making hip replacements. And so that's a testament to how safe the product is. It's safe for your engine. How safe is it for the environment once you dispose of it? Most of them end up in the engine staying on the surface. If some of them get released, they get utilized pretty much like any uh, ceramic particles. They're safe for the environment. What comes from nature can be returned safely back there. Well, when you're talking carefree solutions for your engine, you can stop noises, stop knock, make your engine last longer, and even bring an old engine back to life. You can check it out at tribotex.com and see how the science works. Now your car's accessories are driven by a serpentine drive belt. I can show it to you right here in action. Here's our serpentine drive belt going around all the components on the front. Components like an alternator, a compressor, a power steering pump, and it even drives the water pump. And think about this, without a water pump, catastrophic damage. That's why it's important to check it. Now, the rules change when it comes to checking it. Our old belts here used to be neoprene belts. You can actually look at it and you can see the cracks all the way through that belt. Well, that was pretty simple. You know it's time to replace it. Not the case today. They're EPDM material. What does that mean? Well, it wears down in the grooves like a tire. Then it starts to introduce heat into the components. It starts to slip and you have problems. So the way to check it is get your belt checker. You can go down and get one of these, pretty simple. Just put it in. I got a new belt right here. It's sticking up. It's not worn down. I go to the next one, which is fairly aged. It's starting to recess down in there. And then I go to the worn belt and bam, it's totally gone. Now you can get one like this as well. Put it in the threads right there, the tread. It doesn't want to wiggle. I go to here, it wiggles. I go to the last one, it wiggles all over the place. So you want to make sure you take care of your accessory belt drive system. Truly a system, tensioner, all is one component. Make sure you put a new belt on. Your car will be good for a long time. Well, we have used all of our allotted time for this episode of Motorhead Garage. We're sure glad you came along for the ride, and we're going to do it again next week, so be sure to join us then. In the meantime, you can go to Facebook and check us out there. And if you have something you want to see on the show, email Jeff at masterstv.com. From our entire crew, we will see you next week on Motorhead Garage, presented by Topcoat.